do you miss the old days of pay-per-views being a special occurrence or do you enjoy the fast pace that we're on now where it feels like as soon as one's over, it's time to start promoting another because it's three or four weeks away. Oh my gosh, man. I I do miss the time in between. I miss being able to settle back, absorb what you just did and build to something new and have the time to actually build to it and have some fun building to it and get some good television out of it along the way, build the one big match versus the way that the business has evolved over the years is that you are constantly creating big matches all the time to get to bigger matches on the pay-per-views. So it's, 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 uh, that leapfrog system. The, the leap has gotten a whole hell of a lot shorter than it ever used to be. And this was at a time that we had, you know, it was the big five and this was the fifth of the big five with mania SummerSlam, Survivor Series, and Rumble, and then we added King of the Ring. And woo, yeah, we thought this was like, how are we going to do five of these a year? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about something else that you've started to sort of transition to in the company. You run some commercials in here pushing the new generation, and this has been talked about a lot. But you know, you're comparing sort of the the old regime, the Hulk Hogan era with being slow, moving, prodding, old, elderly, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you're still going to manage to have some of that on your own too, but it does feel a little weird. It doesn't feel like something Vince would normally do. It, It feels like Vince quote, wouldn't sell it. But now that Hogan is gone. And it's become apparent, Hey, he's going to debut with WCW next month, uh, in a pay-per-view bash at the beach with Ric Flair. Of course, that's going to really turn things around for WCW and they'll continue that momentum with nitro. And we know what's coming with the NWO, but we're already seeing Hulk Hogan, you know, there's shots across the bow here. And, And so we're talking about new generation, but we're also promoting macho man. And we're talking about how this isn't the old slow plotting guys you've seen before, but, oh, check out Mabel. What did you think of the, the positioning of the new generation and specifically shitting on Hulk Hogan? Well, you know, I don't think it was so much shitting on Hulk Hogan as it was trying to distance ourselves from the past and trying to distance ourselves from what the company had been associated with for many years. And when you still have that lingering over your head, and you're trying to promote Bret Hart, people are going to constantly compare Bret to Hulk, no matter what you do. So you have to do whatever it is you can on your side to, to change that, change that narrative, however the hell you want to do it. And I'll never forget sitting in a room with some marketing experts. And, and one of the things is, you know, you've heard me talk about it before when we made the move to focus on Bret, we, we, would often ask ourselves, what would we do in this situation if it were Hulk? Uh, whether it was marketing or promotion or, or a match or whatever it is, you know, you'd say, okay, well, if it was Hulk, what would you do? And you try and apply that logic. Sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't, because Brett was different. Brett was new in that role. And we're sitting around all these marketing geniuses and shit. I even want to say that we had an outside company at the time that had come in to advise us and and try and help us out with some of these different ideas that we had. And the one that stuck was, you know, when a a brand new cereal or, or, or an old cereal or, or Coke or Pepsi or whatever, they want to reinvent themselves. It's, you know, the new and improved, the new Coke, the new, you know, the new and improved corn crisps or whatever the fuck it is. And it was new and improved. It's new. So people, no matter all you do is you put that fresh paint of coat on it. And, uh, <laughs> by God, you know, you've got, you've got something new. So Brett was that new fresh paint of coat. So, um, it was new and improved. And we were looking at guys like, 
the one, two, three kid razor and, and diesel and Sean and just a younger batch younger in comparison to what the previous regime had been. Uh, so let's put them up in the forefront. And as it, we get into this card, you'll see how well that worked out. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's what I want to talk about. Is, especially for the goddamn closer. Well, yeah. So let's talk about it. I mean, this is the kind of point I was driving to. It's, it's more, it's not necessarily, it doesn't feel like, um, it feels like a marketing decision but not necessarily one that Vince is totally on board with. Maybe he is taking the advice of, Hey, you got to put new and improved on it. And that'll maybe get some renewed interest. Okay. I get that. But he still sort of goes with what he knows. Your main event is Roddy Piper. Who's 40 years old and Jerry Lawler. Who's 44 years old. And I think this is the first time in WWF history that two guys who are 40 plus are headlining a pay-per-view. So At the same time, we're pushing throughout the show. This is the new generation. We literally have the oldest main event in company history at that point. Well, in our viewpoint, the King of the ring was the main event. And that's the way that we were trying to position it. Your feature match. Yes. Without a doubt. Um, one of the main attractions was the old timers in Roddy and Jerry. And you look at it now, now, hell they're kids. Um, in comparison and both of them could still go, but when you are looking at, and I think that from the overall viewpoint, looking at it going new and improved, well, damn, man, it's bringing me back Roddy Piper and and Jerry Lawler is a hundred years old and Jerry Lawler wasn't a hundred years old. Jerry was still new to our audience right? at that time. So at least that was new, but hot rod was a blast from the past. So that was kind of mixing the new with the old and trying to help elevate the new generation, if you will. Well, everybody knows what I'm about to do. AJ styles is 42. Uh, John Cena is 42. So while we're talking about these guys as if, oh, they're so past their prime Piper here's 40 and uh, Lawler is 44. So it's not that old of a main event, but it is an interesting marketing decision to sort of talk about old wrestling and poke fun at the competition, but at the same time say, we've got the new guys and then, oh, yeah. here's your main event. Uh, it's a couple of old dudes. Macho man's on this show and we're going to talk about him, unfortunately for, uh, drawing the short straw and having to carry art Donovan this entire show. But how did he feel about the promotion of the, the new generation? You're specifically taking shots at Hulk Hogan, which depending on the day of the week, he was probably four. So he's probably four in this era, but he's got to wonder, Hey, wait a minute. I don't want to be done in the ring. What's that mean for me? Right? Yeah. But this was also during the time that Randy was indicating to us that he wanted to be done in the ring. Randy didn't want to take bumps anymore. Randy was looking at this period in his life to make the move into the office. He wanted to work behind the scenes. And I think that pride and everything else that Randy never wanted to get out of the ring, but at the same time, the realistic, the business side of Randy was saying, yeah, you don't let me get out of the ring. Uh, huh? well, that's going to be hard today, uh, to get out of the ring and get behind, do the commentary, do the color commentary, but also help us out with creative as well. And that was a decision on Randy Savage's side. And Randy liked pushing the new young talent. One of Randy's charges per Randy himself was, you know, I'll show you how to get these new guys over. I'll show you, I'll get them over because it's going to take an old timer like me to do it. So he had that attitude and, you know, contrary to so many of the things that, that I've heard and other people have reported over the years, Randy wasn't that bitter guy. I don't want to. I don't want to get out of the ring right now at the time. Randy was the guy that was pushing the young kids. Randy was the guy pushing, man, let, let me, let me get in there and help out. Let me go on to the next stage of my life in this career. Cause I don't want to be battered down and beaten up when I'm 50, 60 years old. 